Ey pekir uyğur uyğan uyğun yeter. Seni mal yok hem de kesse can yeter. Bu ölümdün özenliği kutkazmısan. Ey senin halin kader, halin kader. This morning I saw a man beaten down in the street. It's a horrible way to wake up. There were two dozen Chinese men against one Uyghur. They were beating him with clubs and bricks. I've been having trouble sleeping again. Seems like every time I wake up, it's as if I never dreamed. I've been back in Dalian, China a week, and it seemed like my feet still hadn't touched the ground. Dalian is a large port on the east side of the Liaodong Peninsula. It divides the Yellow Sea to the east from the Bohai Sea to the west. It's a big city, but the pace of life here is much slower than the spreading mega cities of Beijing and Shanghai. A hundred years ago, Dalian was nothing more than a small fishing town on the southern edge of Manchuria. Today, it is the largest ice-free port in the North Pacific. It's quickly growing into a metropolis with one of the last remaining streetcars in China that connects all of the various squares in the old town center. Archie Guanchan, or 27th Square, is one of them. Dalian is full of numbered squares. 27 square, 38 square, 54 square. It was at 27 square that I met Mamedi on a cold March night. We spent many a night huddled around those tables that had barbecue grills built into them. It was a place to discuss politics, and some were known to have participated in the East Turkestan Liberation Movement both through protests and riots. I came back to China to find him because I wanted him to tell his own story and because he had gone missing and I was worried for his safety. We first came to China on the train from Holland, through Russia, in the middle of winter. It's one of the worst ideas I've ever had. 
The trains are heated by coal stoves, so they're boiling on the inside and deep freeze on the outside. But what a way to enter China. We arrived in China on March 2nd, 2001. I remember it was snowing as we got out at the station. We only knew one word in Chinese, xie xie, thank you. We had come to teach English, but it quickly turned into something else. We made friends, both local and international, and one of them invited us to a going away party at a small restaurant in an alley off of 27 Square. It was an unforgettable night, and from then on, this place became known to all of us as Archie. Xinjiang isn't really the name of the Uyghur homeland. It's East Turkestan. Xinjiang means new territory in Chinese, like New Mexico. It was the name that the Chinese gave it after their military invaded the area in the late 1800s under the Qing dynasty. Speaking of names, Mamedi is not a Uyghur name. In fact, it's not a name in any language. The Uyghur name is Mamet, but that wasn't his name either. The Chinese couldn't pronounce his name, so they called him Mai Mai T, which sounded like Mamedi to us, so we all started affectionately calling him Mamedi. <laughs>
Kaochuan. This is Chinese for barbecue skewers. Uyghurs call it koop, their version of the word kebab. There's very little work for Uyghurs in Xinjiang, so many Uyghur men and women are forced to come to China's big eastern cities to look for jobs. This is where I used to live, on Shinjinjia, Century Street. And it was the last place that I saw Mamedi. We met, had dinner, and then made plans to meet out in his hometown in Xinjiang. And then all of a sudden, he was nowhere to be found. And everyone I talked to told me something different. So far in the last couple of days, I've had probably six different stories about where my is. So why not? 5-4 Square was one of the last places Mamedi had worked, so I decided to go there and see if anyone knew where he might be. What happened? It's a muscular. It's a muscular. I mean, Samba. What happened? I don't change know. They changed it. They changed it. The city it. changed. You know what I mean? So much. The city have to, to you know, it's broken. It's old building. They make the new building. I know. Make the city is beautiful. Beautiful. 
but they take away the restaurant. Yeah, right. It's restaurant only pay like two thousand or three thousand a month. I like know. A new building is twenty thousand or thirty thousand a month. Oh, Which one is better? Exactly. What can you do? Someone suggested I try the new Uyghur restaurant that had just opened up on Huang Halu, Yellow River Road. It turns out one of the guys working there used to work with Mamedi at 54 Square, Wasaguanchan. <laughs> I knew he wouldn't call, but at least I had found someone who knew him. One of the guys there told me about a Uyghur spot in Lushun that I should check out. They said we might find him there. Mahmoud Jidoma? Mahmoud. Ilida. Ali. Ili. Ili Ren. Ali. Mayo. Chicken. Double chin. Liangne Yichen. Tayo Yu Fandian. Shall call the Fandian Zai. Archie Guanchan. Mahmoud. Dega? Dea. Dea. Dea. Dea. Dea. Dea. Dea. Dea. Dea. Dea. Dea. Dea. Dea. Dea. Dea. Dea. Dea. Dea. Dea. Dea. Dea. What I didn't realize at the time was that he had called a friend he thought might be able to help us find Mamedi. Chamber, English? Oh, come sit down over here. Come sit over here. This is Alim. He's 23 years old, and he's lived his entire life in China. He's a Muslim Uyghur from a small town in Xinjiang. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Yes. You like Dalian Shi Yi Yi Tian Liang Tian? Mm, Urum Chia? Ah. Mm, San Tian. San Tian. Three days. Wow. It's a long time. It's a long time. And the train ride is okay? Not so bad? All right. And what what you do here? What do they here? Ninja Mula? Ni the Gongzo? Gongzo? Yeah. Student. Student. Yeah, I'm studying to cook. Studying to be a cook? Yes. Beautiful, yeah? What, uh, Xinjiang food? Xinjiang food? Yeah. Never Xinjiang food. Uh, what kind of food? What a stroke of luck. Not only had we found somebody who knew Mamedi, he was looking for him too. Mm -hmm. 
Müşkatım hazır dalyan dolat mı? Ne müşkatım dalyan da? Uygur sırt ki tezet seyretsinler kapçılanı tutuşup gitti. Bu karpazım hanızda alçaklamanı uygurla alçaklı da bula. Ya bazı başkaları da nerede? Tat peket kendi kime ne müşbu kanı hayran kaldım bir gün sonra. Ben özel bir tonuş bulandı şu bazı başkaları da onu sorsam. Hükümetin uygur kapçılanı kapsat kuzmayı mı dedi dedi. Ben bu kapçılan da sat kuzmuşsa uygurla kanaklı bir yer. Ne müşbu ne müşbu kim bakıda? Alim decided to come with us. The folks at Lushun had given us a name for a guy in Beijing and said Mamedi might have gone there looking for work. We arrived in Beijing in the early morning and headed over to the youth hostel. Ben işkemen oyuncuyla ama şu işkemen oyuncuyla şimdi ben kesmen olursa o intam intam öt kolegimle kabul kılmam tam işkemen oyuncuyla yetince de oxpitalım oxpitalı gendikken ara tazırman işkizdi. Ben de bermedi doğru an kahinsiz valla hizmet balık ki mana yok. Ne mişin dedi? Eş idin öt mü dedik ki ben de ki azır oxsa kahinsiz seviyem. Hs ki de yetince rica. Şimdi oturmam da ki mana işte gibi de biz çünkü sebebi ben de oxsam sebebi uygur bağlamam çünkü. Ama yurtta hizmet bu muhandik ya. Yani başta ben akal birleşik ağırlı çiçildim ne? Körnüşke 60% uygurlarını işe uğurlaştırış da naçıraylık sözleydi o. Mış yerlik milletlerini, uygurlarını, asallık milletlerini işe uğurlaştırış, ulağını çokum terbiyelip yetiştiriş, kadr diye yetiştiriş de sözleydi. Yani ula onun içine pütküz gendik ki ula yerlik de kuruk neyasını okup bir çoğun oğandık ula kuruk kusak savaşsızlığı bapla onun pütküzdü. Ali Mehtep ki çıkamakam boğandık ki endik ki ula ne işe kalmakam dedim deydi o Hıhtayla Ali Mehtep pütküzdü gendik ki asla sen Ali Mehtep pütküz gendik Hıhtayla işe kürdü. Endi bizim Ali Mehtep pütküz gendik ki şiki bir sen dikelik iş oranı ki gendik ki annesi cemiyet işsiz kıp ki tutu anlık ki uyak bir yak iş izleş ki başlaydı. Anlığın ki özü muşu halkı çöp kakallıkıdın berdaşlık beremey özünün erkülüğü üç Alim got a lead on a Uyghur restaurant south of Tiananmen Square, so we decided to head over there and see if they knew anything about where Mamedi might be. Chinese, Xinjiang, Kawa. Xinjiang, Chinese. Good. Good. Good. Good. Good. Good. Good. Good. Good. Good. Good. Good. Good. Good. Good. Good. Good. Good. Good. Good. Good. Good. Good. Good
In 2007, in the run-up to the Beijing Olympics, the government evicted 5,000 Uyghurs from the Ganjiako neighborhood. They said there were too many Uyghurs living in one area. In its place, they put a Xinjiang theme park, complete with Han Chinese dressed as Uyghurs and serving Uyghur food to Chinese tourists. <laughs> Ya 
şimdi hoşal öttü. Ulan mı özünü bakti kesildi? Biz mi? Gerçi ulanı kubul kılamasak mı? Biz çok mu ulan ve adısı tutup boptular biz bilen bildi yaşısı meyli oldu dediğinde kesildi. Ben hoşumunu çıkıp cemiyetle düşünüş gibi başlığa vaktimde Uyğurla, bölgünçi, milletçi, de, radikaliz, e, kolak Diyen isimler bile adılış gibi başladı. Bunların ismimizin şunda özgürtüşü bilen tenla Uyğur halkının karakteri mi, çıray şekli mi, boy türkü mü ten özgürüp mağdı. İntayın stratejiye bilen kegelliğini şunun da his kıldım ki Aldı bilen bizim iktisadi cihetten boğup da Akıdım bizim meynetçilik bilen kalaklık iştirip da. Pul bomba kandı ki. Bu yok. Benim <gülüyor> <gülüyor> <gülüyor> 有一般人就问那些你打劫问一下现在几点啊你问的呀问的呀那给他告别这样子讲什么钱也不生气就有一有一点点那那样啊那个到现在新疆是两点现在是北疆是十点我说现在在八点八点我们的钱到时候十点到
We'd struck out again, but we felt like we were on his trail, and we had the name of another guy in a restaurant near the train station in Xi'an. Xi'an means Western Gate, and it was the traditional beginning and ending of the Silk Road as far as the Chinese were concerned. Everything east was China proper, and everything west was the Wild Road. There was one specific one we were looking for by the train station. The guys in Luoyang said he might be there. From Xi'an, we began our ascent up the Gansu Corridor, a wide valley between two mountain ranges that many travelers throughout history have described in great detail. 
as their final departure from the traditional Chinese homeland. The distinction was clear between the great river basins below of the Yangtze and Yellow Rivers to the high desert of the Taklamakan and Tarim Basin. We weren't sure where to find him, so we decided to look for a Uyghur restaurant and ask if they had seen him come through. We were really starting to strike out and decided to try one more place before heading back to the hotel. We were running out of options, so we all agreed to head on to Xinjiang and try his hometown. We had some names and places there we could check, so we packed up and started the final stretch toward East Turkestan. There weren't enough seats on the train, so we were forced to make an unplanned stop in Jiayuguan. Fuzzy, you're going to chip. Me, my hand, I'm going to zig. Me, my hand, I'm going to zig. 
o mimarlar bütün adamlar toşup gitipti. Bu amalsızlıkla uyak çöküler net saatlerde aynı. Bir ad, bir küçük ya da kırdık. Kırsa bunun çetelikle yatkızmaya gitken. Tehlimiz gerçekten bir anda hemen şu mektedin ki okusu kendisi boğalıktan ya taktiği olduk. The train wasn't coming for two days, so we figured we'd use our time there to see a historical spot that Jiayu Guan is known for, the far western outpost of the Great Wall. The Chinese had not traditionally settled this land. Instead, they used military garrisons to maintain seasonal control over this part of the Silk Road, in order to ensure trade with the West was kept open and their goods safe. It was said by the Chinese that once you left Jiayu Guan heading westward, you had left the world behind. Yani ki bu poyuzun nurgunluk adamla var. Poyuzlu adamla şimdi de nurgun. Lakin ortada oru yok. Alıktan manda mı oru yok? Hem mesi manda alıkladım yeter var bunun yoksa doğdun. Oturmuş ne kadar kanızdan nasıl ne çıkarılar demek işbirliği. Hem biz adı kelimeler biz oyuklar buldu. We met a Uyghur man in the dining car. He told us about how he was forced to do traditional song and dance shows. He said it was the only work he could find, and still, it didn't pay very well. We had finally arrived in Xinjiang after nearly a month of travel. 
We were no closer to finding Mamedi, but we were determined to learn everything we could about Uyghur culture and their current situation. Because Xinjiang, or as it is historically known, East Turkestan, is a high desert, all of its towns are oases and separated by relatively great distances. It's one of the things that made them such great traders during the Silk Road era. Turpan and its neighboring town Hami have traditionally associated more with China because they sit so close to the entrance of Xinjiang. We met some guys at a restaurant in the main city market. They told us about another traditional song and dance show on the main street in town. It turned out to be mostly Han Chinese people dressed in strange Uyghur costumes, singing in Chinese. Songs made to sound exotic. It felt strange for everyone, including the performers. After that, they took us to their spot. And that was an amazing experience. So, I'm going to talk to Chirpan is the second deepest place on earth after the Dead Sea and sits on the edge of the second largest desert in the world, the Taklamakan. It's famous for its beautiful grapes and the underground irrigation system that feeds them, called the Hadas. This system brings water from the Tian Shan Mountains and is a marvel of ancient engineering. It spans around 5,000 kilometers, more than 3,000 miles, greater than the distance from New York to San Francisco. We decided to move on to Urumqi, the Chinese capital of Xinjiang. Alim had lived there before, so we could have places to stay and people to meet with. It was exciting to finally be in Xinjiang, but we could already see the many changes the Chinese government had made to the traditional Uyghur way of life. In 1949, when the Chinese communists first came in under Mao Zedong, the Uyghurs numbered over 80%. But now, with the constant migration of Han Chinese from eastern China, the Uyghurs were hovering just around 40% and were quickly becoming minorities in their own land. You go from China, now we're going to go to China. Go, sit. Can you go to China? Yes. You can go to China. You can go to China. Xinjiang is the source of much of China's coal, oil, and gas, so many of those who migrate west come to work in the oil industry.
Urumqi is the Chinese capital of Xinjiang, though many Uyghurs live and work here. It's a beautiful city, surrounded by mountains, but the tension between the folks from the region and those who have moved here from elsewhere is palpable. Alim wanted to meet up with Yusup, a friend he had met while he was looking for work in Dalian. Yusup was back in town now and wanted to have lunch. This is Yusuf. He and Alim met in Dalian when they were both looking for work. Chicken Late that night, on the way back to the hotel, we came across another strange show. This time, a fashion show, with Russian models wearing modern dresses made from traditional Uyghur ikat silk fabric. Yeah. Where are we? Rumchi. Rumchi? And uh, Xinjiang Hotel, yeah. Uh, what's up, Urumqi? Is a good place? Yeah. Yeah? Ni Chisai Urumqi Toshanye? Two years. Two years you live here? I study in two years. Study here for two years. What What did you study here? Cook. Cooking? Yeah. Chinese food? 
Yeah, Chinese vigor and uh, yeah, it's vegan food. Yeah. I know they work cook. You don't like to work as a cook. Yeah, I know like computer and uh, English. You like uh, studying English and working on computer? Yeah. Chinese people know like Uyghur. I know like working Chinese. I like coming to America and Turkey and working. Yeah. I said at the beginning of the story that I had woken up to seeing a man beaten down in the street. Well, this is that morning, and it was horrific. We had just finished getting ready and grabbed some tea when we saw the commotion begin outside. I'll let Alim tell the story, because he knows how it ended. Today is the 17th of August, and just around this time in 2004, Stephen, Hung, and myself came back to Rumji from Jiayugan, Gansu. We checked into a hotel called Xinjiang Fandan. Not sure if it was the day after we checked in or two days after that. At the opposite side of the hotel, we saw a Uyghur man was being beaten up by more than two dozen Chinese who had spades and clubs in their hands, and that Uyghur man had a knife. We wondered what was going on, and before long they got near to a police station, and the police distanced themselves. In the end, the Uyghur man lay on the ground helplessly. After this incident, I learned that the Uyghur man was a businessman, and some Chinese guys had said something offensive to him, which triggered the clash. That Uyghur man who got beaten up by some Chinese guys was sent to a hospital and he didn't make it, because he was seriously wounded. Azerbaijan'da we immediately checked out of the hotel and made our way to the bus station. China has a really cool system of bed buses. Buses they have converted to all beds, and it's a really amazing way to see the country. We were heading over the Tian Shan, the heavenly mountains, to Gulja, where Mamedi is from.
we decided to stay one night up in the mountains and take a taxi the rest of the way in. What he was trying to say was, the traditional homelands of the Turkic groups in that area were being overrun, and eventually, like in 500 years from now, there would be no more Turkic people in this area, and maybe no more Xinjiang. Gulja, also called Ili by Uyghurs and others from the area, and Yining by the Chinese. It's an interesting town of about a half a million people. It sits in between the southern and northern ridges of the Tian Shan, which run east to west. It's very close to the Kazakhstan border, so it has traditionally been more closely connected to Russia and the Kazakhs they trade with. That night in Dalian, at my apartment, Mamedi had given me the name of a place in Gulja and told me if I was ever in the area, to look for him there. We went to several spots, but no luck. My buddy Hung and I had to catch a flight out of Arumchi in a few days, so we decided it was time to pack it in and head back. We weren't giving up, just had to try from another approach. You have to um, change it. I'll do it in a second. And we just gotta like sit down and then with it on. With it on, and then get up and walk around just for a minute. You know what I mean? Yeah. Around the outside is good. Mon honneur tel que ça, mais it's vite là. This is this is my friend. Name is Hussein. You speak in. Xinjiang, Xinjiang no is a Uyghur name. This is Xinjiang is Uyghur friend, his name is Esterkstan. 
speaking little Chinese people oh let's say shoes 20 years sure so, yeah. hmm. what's you speak jail jail jail 20 years my friend because he said speak as Xinjiang, no Xinjiang name is Estrukstan, the Xinjiang name, no Xinjiang. Because he called Xinjiang Estrukstan. Yeah. And there is this. It's the Uyghur people and the Estrukstan. Mm. So I love Estrukstan. This is Estrukstan, I love. Chinese people can hear, fans me. Bye bye, world, see you. Shit. Ulanın işki siyasetti de, ben de güzel bir yukarı katlam işledim. Reisler bile hemen oturup aşıyor. Hemen mehbiyetlikimi bildi, galla bile arlaşıp, bütün muşundaki sözler bile sözleştim. İşki bir sen dini işki etmezdik ya Uygurlar'ın işi oradan verdi galla. Hande gün onun aldığını, ulanına korktuş için, şunun içinin de çoğrak, yakşırak, yapkı galladın, bir üç dört nana çıkıp atıdım. Hıhtay halkı, Uygur halkı, yalgancılıkla korkuncalıktan başka neresini ögedin yaptım. Bana Uygurlar'ın işi oranı doğurluk, özünün muharipi doğurluk, Özünün bir erkilliği, sözleş erkilliği doğurlu. Hem de o bizim zeminimizde tahtı aldı. Biz böyle yaşsak. Bizim zeminimizde, bayılığımızda elip, özümüzde mi küçükini bir aramamızda bir teniş koymadık o. Şunun da kere hem de Uygur karşı çıkmaya kan takıldı. As we headed to the airport, so many thoughts were running through our heads. Would we ever find Mamedi? What was the future for the Uyghur people? Would I ever be able to find closure for this story, which had been with me for so long? This was Alim's first flight ever, and we were excited to be doing it with him, up and over the heavenly mountains, back to Arumchi. We arrived midday and went over to a local music shop to catch some music before heading to the airport. What's problem is people don't buy safe. Maybe other countries maybe make money very difficult like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here is maybe I can sell some thing. No. I can sell some Chinese for tourists. Some other countries too, I can sell something. So right, but before um, you have very good shop and they tear down to build something new. Yeah. What do you think about this? I think it's okay. Yeah. It's okay. Yes. Maybe this business for me is better. So you're saying it's a good thing because it brings tourists and it brings money? Yes, yes. But at the same time, they tear down a lot of old buildings. Yeah. Uh, yes, yes, it is. Yes. And old buildings are the big destroyed and news. If news, old buildings don't come as a tourist, we are now developing, developing maybe. So slowly, slowly, slowly, baby. <laughs> you get that? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
We were running late, so we said our goodbyes and headed on to our flight. It was tense getting through Chinese customs with all the video we had shot. But as we passed through the clouds on our way home, we began to decompress and process everything we had seen and heard. The Uyghurs were dealing with so much, and it was only going to get worse. Back home, we returned to the daily grind. But it wasn't long before the Uyghurs were back in the news and something even more strange. We hadn't heard from Alim since we left, and we started to get worried. New protests have erupted in China's western Xinjiang region two days after at least 156 people were killed and over 1,000 wounded in the country's worst ethnic violence in decades. A couple things were uh, the reasons of Sunday's, uh, uh, what started as a peaceful demonstration. The first thing is the, the Uyghurs, uh, I believe, fed up with the communist Chinese regime. Uh, which has been brutally oppressing Uyghurs' political, economic, and social freedom in the last six decades. The Uyghurs don't have a right to worship. They don't have a right to a fair employment. They don't have a right to uh, enjoy their cultural heritage. Uh, the women under uh, women and the children under 18 years old and, uh, and retired, even retired government workers are not allowed to participate in any religious activities. The Uyghur language has been banned in uh, higher education system. They impose Chinese language uh, uh, based uh, education system. And uh, despite the economic boom in China, Uyghurs experience highest uh, employment rate. Uh, and Chinese government openly discourages and discriminate, discourages Uyghurs applying for high-paid positions. And, and also the, uh, the job advertisements, if you look at them, openly uh, discourage uh, the Uyghurs to apply for a certain type of high-paid uh, jobs in the society. We began to hear stories about the Chinese gulag, the Lao guy, and how many Uyghurs were being rounded up and put in concentration camps. Harry Wu filmed the first undercover footage inside the Laogai. For doing so, the Chinese government tried to send him back to the labor camps. This is top secret. That's why in 1995, the Chinese government arrested me and sentenced me 15 years. They charged me stealing state secrets. I, of course, I didn't involve any military, political, social issue, whatever. I just want to find out how many camps. One reason why China wants to keep this vast network of camps secret is that each is a commercial operation, making and often exporting everything from industrial machinery to cheap consumer goods. Many, many prisons. Rabia Kadir was said to be one of the five wealthiest people in China, but was arrested in 1999 after being accused by the Chinese government of sharing confidential reports with her husband. She spent six years in prison and fled to the United States after her release in 2005. I finally got word from Alim, and sure enough, he had been picked up and spent time in one of these camps. He was back in Dalian, so I decided to go back to China and talk to him about his experience.
Hey, hey Fred, how are you? How are you? Fine. Yeah, come on. Thanks, man. How have you been? I'm okay. Good. Have a seat, have a seat. Okay. I can no longer stand the fact that Uyghurs and Han Chinese are treated differently, so I left after working there for three months. Later, I went to Dalian, clean to people and selling kebabs. Local people always asked me if we Uyghurs were terrorists, and they thought that there was lots of terrorism going on in Xinjiang. We know some Chinese police here, and even they would ask if we Uyghurs were regarded as terrorists. My answer to them was, a resounding, no, we're not. According to the officers, it said that whenever they see Uyghurs or people from Hunan, police would catch them. If we didn't have ID cards and we happened to run into the police, then they would arrest us. So now we're going to go to Tianjin Jia. Okay, I will go to this line, this drop. Yeah. Right. Cool. Cool. What do you want to take? You want to take the train or you want to take a taxi? So the train. Take the train? Yeah. If it doesn't come, you want to take a motorcycle taxi maybe? Yeah, no problem. Cool. That's okay, no problem. It's my one more ticket? Yeah. Five. Five? One okay, okay. One Yanga? Yeah. So, so, so. Yeah, okay, let's go. Says that I got to know Stephen and Hung in 2004 in Dalian, and after some time, we went to Xinjiang together. After having known each other for around four weeks, we went to Hulja, and we were trying to look for Mehmet, but we couldn't find him. Our relationship is quite good, and they're good people, and I learned a lot from them. I brought them to my home, and when we were just about to set off, my family received a phone call, and where do you think this call came from? That call came from our police station, saying that I couldn't go anywhere. The police showed up and arrested me, and they said they have some questions that need to be answered. After I got arrested, the police tortured me, they beat me, they even stuck needles into my toes, and my eyes were bruised up too. I was locked up in Tarim prison. For eight days, I slept in a cold cell, which is a water prison, and the water comes up to your waistline. Yes, I slept in this water cell. They didn't think of all of this was enough, so they bruised up my limbs too by beating me, according to what they told me. I'd better forget revealing all of this. The Chinese police say I'm a terrorist, and I got arrested for that. But we're not terrorists, and I never believed what they said. They jailed me for up to six months, and then released me. What I want to say to you Uyghur guys in the US is that you guys know what we're going through, and we've come up with nothing to change our situation. And I hope you guys try your best to do something to save Uyghurs from the tough Chinese regime. Fight for Uyghurs. Um, now we're also talking about Chinese food and how you know, whenever he was in, he was in the camp, they made him eat food that um, was not halal, was not kosher, and didn't have a choice what he was eating, and made him eat pork, and made him eat other meat that he didn't, you know, he would never eat on his own. But how he was stuck in a, stuck in, in a small cell where he wasn't allowed to stand up and wasn't allowed to sit down and didn't see the sun or the moon for six months. He said, didn't see the sun, didn't see the moon for six months. Six months. Uh, no. For six months. Yeah, six months. Oh, shit. 
So now we're gonna go walk around town a little bit, see what else is going on. Maybe tomorrow we're gonna go find my Maddie. Find my Maddie? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so man, yeah. uh, when are you gonna come to America? Yeah, I got I let go to the no passport. Yeah. So what happened with the passport? With the visa? Visa, you help me. Yeah. Passport. I'll help you. Yeah. But what happened like when you went to Beijing? Beijing. What? You didn't you go to Beijing? You give money? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How much? Mm, Twenty six. Twenty six thousand RMB. Yeah. And what happened? One month. I, I am in Beijing hostel, sleeping one month. And? One month. And what happened? What happened? What is what happened? Like, the, tell me so, You as Uyghur people, sorry, and the Chinese, um, Chinese is, is that the Gong, Gong Chen, no, Zheng Fu. Uh-huh. Chinese Zheng Fu. Yeah. And Uyghur people, stop, come, America. Yep. They won't let you go. Yeah. So what's the plan now? No plan. No plan. What, you, what do you want to do? Uh, after I come in Dalian. Yeah. After you come Dalian, you are looking here. Uh huh. Why video? Yeah, why video? Adette uyguladın ki, okulda üyelerle vaktinde yurtu karşıya ben bir kişi yezge mi şu? Her bir yılda turda. Bizim gibi her şey bir nayin için yok bunda bilin Allah. Çünkü sebep biz uygulan yurtu aldık için. Ali, working. Yeah? Good. This way. Where? This way. I asked you before. Yeah, I'm Sakhar Ali. Yeah. Ali. He's here? Yeah, he's here. I asked you before. You Ali said is not here. Italian. Ali and Shimjian move. Ah. Fine music. Ben yurtumda ki yurtçum, Mehmet Mustafa Dalyan kendi defamla, Dalyan kendi kendi namla, mahkeme arkadaşı Mustafa Dalyan kendi kendi Mehmet defamla. Lakin onun neleri katkı mı yapmaz? Yalnız onu yanında zavatmaz. Ben üzemli, vurun başkalarını izdikentim, lider izdep yügentim. Hazır hiç neden izdimey, üzemlila lider tıpkıyorsettim. Ben Uygur halkının, 20 milyon Uygur halkının yükünü öz üstümge aldım. Uygur halkı şunu salam eğitmen ki, aşu vakti ki, helik ailede otağa ay, Rabia kadar, kandak bop lider çıktı, de cevap vermen. We may never have found Mamedi, but we did find a way to share his story that is like so many others. And it left us with these questions. Is it possible for both of these ancient cultures to coexist? Can they each preserve their own way of life without coming into conflict? Does one group have to lose for the other one to win? Can Xinjiang East Turkestan progress without destroying the Uyghur people? Will we ever have answers to these questions that began in that first moment of meeting Mamedi? Thank you.
this heart of mine embraces all day through. In that small cafe, report across the way the children's carousel, the chestnut tree, the wish you were. But I'll be seen.